Hey, this is Mike from Minimal 3DP, and today I'm starting work on an upgrade for my K2 Plus. So let's go ahead and get started. This video is brought to you by PCBWay, an awesome prototyping service. I want to thank them for their sponsorship for this video. So just a couple days ago, I noticed on Amazon that the Micro Swiss FlowTech hot end for the K2 Plus, this is supposed to be a very good hot end, was on sale for $60. So it was basically $25 off. And it was supposed to be a Black Friday special. Again, that was listed as of the 22nd. And of course, now it's back to full price. But this is something you can watch Particularly if you're watching it on Black Friday or through Cyber Monday, watch Amazon, see if this goes on sale. I think this is going to be a pretty good upgrade. Now, I'm also going to point out, so on Micro Swiss's website, it's listed for that same $84.95. But I'm noticing here at the top that on Black Friday and Cyber Monday, we're looking at 30% off on the site, which should put us back down into that $60 range for this hot end. I'm going to copy the coupon code here and put this in the video description so hopefully that helps people find it i'll put a link to amazon as well as the micro swiss website so hopefully that helps now let's switch over and let's take a look at the hot end and then we'll go ahead and install it i'm going to point out right along with the hot end i did buy two replacement nozzles and just something interesting here they're $20.97 on Amazon, and they're $29 on Micro Swiss website. Again, 30% off. I did buy, wind up buying there several versions of this nozzle, and I'd make sure that you at least got the high flow. I've noticed on Amazon, they have three different versions of this nozzle. One is just a regular plated or brass plated nozzle, not high speed. There's two different high speed nozzles, one just a high flow nozzle, and then there's this high flow CM2. I personally got the CM2. If I remember correctly, the main difference is this nozzle is the hardened steel as opposed to this nozzle, which is just high flow. So again, there, there is some differences here, but you want to pay attention to I that. On the high flow, 50 cubic millimeters per second, which is really hot. So that's going to be awesome. I'll probably have to recalibrate my printer. So let's see what all this came with. This is a high flow nozzle here. So this one is the $15 one, I believe, at the hot end. Looks pretty good. Let me, and this is a drop in replacement. Let me go get a spare K2 Plus nozzle, and then we'll look at the two side by side. So here is the default nozzle for and hot end for the K2 Plus. Just holding these together. Notice that the cooling fins here are, are bigger and actually look a little fancier. I'm just turning this on its side. This is a drop in replacement. Now, what's interesting to me is I'm noticing that the hot end down here. The heating area is actually smaller on the Micro Swiss. Now, I can't really tell a difference between these two besides this one being bigger. Let me go get a scale and we'll measure them just to see if there's a weight difference. So I pulled out my scale. Let's do the default hot end. And that's showing as 44 grams, Micro Swiss, 45 grams. And that, that could be rounding our. And I'm surprised by this because, again, the cooling fins, again, look bigger. The, this part, the heating element part, is bigger on the, the stock. Again, this is all a drop-in replacement. So let me go ahead and switch over to the printer, and let's just install this, see how hard it is. I've went ahead and zoomed in on the hot end. Now, I've taken the top off. I also have the door open here so I can see everything. Now, I also unplugged the printer and turned off the power. So that's something you want to do before you make any changes with the printer. Now, to get started, I'm going to try real carefully unplug 
these two connectors here from board. Now, it's hard to click these to get the little, so we need to be careful here. So I've gotten them both unplugged. The screws I have to do are these two. We're going to undo these two screws. Let me put these in the lid at the bottom of the printer, holding up the other hot end. Yeah, there's a plate right here. So there's two screws right in here that look like they need to come out. Yep, and the hot end's moving. So let me move my arm out of the way. So there's these two screws here. Again, I'm putting them in the base plate for the hot end, the bottom of the printer, so I can find them again. I want to thank PCBWay for sponsoring this video. And I want to take a minute to point out their PCB design service. There's some fairly powerful tools here to let you get an instant quote. You can click on next steps and put in what you need for your project, all the specifications, and then submit. You can get an instant quote. Now I'll also point out when you get their help with your PCB layout, the charge starts at $88.70 US. And that's a pretty good deal. Now, if you'd like some more information, you can take a look at the website. I hope you found that helpful. Thank you to PCB Way for sponsoring the Minimal 3DP channel. I remember the last time I took out this hot end, I did a video on it, but then it got so embarrassing because I wound up taking out so many screws and all the wrong ones. Now, I'm going to point this out with the hot end that's there. I've been printing with ASA, and if you look here, I actually have what appears to be a clog or a broken piece of filament. So I probably would have been messing with this nozzle relatively soon anyway, and I'm changing this just in time. Now, let me get this other hot end oriented, and then we'll start the install. Now, this is a little hard to see here on this hot end, but there's an indent here in the front. So you want this indent, and you also want the wires coming towards the front of the printer. And I apologize again, I'm zoomed in pretty far. So we want those like that, and what'll wind up happening is these wires are gonna come like that. Let me switch this around a little bit because the Brass wire should actually be on the top. Let's go ahead and work to get this installed. And I have a bit of a problem here. My actual connector came off the board, hopefully. And while this is unscrewed, I'm just gonna, eh, it plugged in, so I should be all right. So let me look down here, oriented like that. The yeah. One plug is in. I'm going to go ahead and plug in the other so that way I have them both. Let's get this wire down a little bit. Okay. And let's get these screws in. Now I'm just going to do screws right here in the front first. And I'm pushing this all the way to the top. Just getting those started because I also want to do the ones at the top. Now it doesn't feel like this grew as stripped as I thought. Maybe I just didn't have the driver in all the way. So I'm tightening these up now. Let's get these screws on the top in. So this is fairly easy here. Like I said, I'm being careful. I have the top off, I have the door open. Now I just need to get my fat fingers around these screws. Uh, for those viewers that are in the US, Currently filming this on Thanksgiving evening. So have a happy Thanksgiving. And I guess I'm thankful for everybody that watches and cares what I'm doing. Now the hot ends in, what I want to do is let's get around the other side of the printer. Let's just turn the printer on real quick. And what I want to see is, am I getting temperature readings on the front of the printer? I'll point out that I'm seeing the hot end temperature and it's showing ambient. 
So that appears to be connected correctly. Let's just do a quick test here and bump this up to 80 and just see if it starts to heat up. Okay, we're heating up. Bump that back down to zero. And I'm gonna go ahead and do a test print. Now, one thing I will do here is I'm going to turn on all the calibrations. Since I changed the nozzle, it's possible input shaping has changed. And I say that because the hot end may be slightly, have a little bit more weight to it, different configuration. We need to do auto leveling. So I'm going to do all that off camera. And then I'll print a Benchy and we'll take a look at it. I'm going to print that Benchy in ASA just so we can. I can use the filament that's in there. And for right now, I just want to print in ASA anyway. So this is all good. So let me start auto detecting and then we'll come back. So as you can see, I've completed the bench sheet. I did have a problem here at the top. It came up off the bed and messed up the roof and the chimney. Now, with that being said, I'm really not upset by this. That was more of a function of probably not a big enough brim at the bottom. I've had issues, particularly with ASA, where it pulls up off the bed. Also, I'm not necessarily super thrilled with the build surface on the K2 Plus. I do have a cryo plate that I need to switch to. I'm sort of waiting till the I beat the heck out of the build plate that's on there. Now, just looking at the Benchy, the body looks phenomenal. I'm really pleased with it. There's probably a little bit of tuning I could do, maybe a little bit of changes in the profile, but all in all, I'm really pleased with the look of this. And I'll be honest, I haven't even done any benches in ASA. I've just been printing functional parts. But all in all, I'm pretty pleased with this. Probably in a couple of weeks, I'll do an update short on the Micro Swiss hot end. And like I said, right now, I'm really pleased with it. I think this looks good. Again, came off off the bed, but that's more the printer as opposed to the hot end. Now, remember, keep an eye out for those deals on Amazon. And also, there's a discount code on Microsoft's website. Anyway, happy Thanksgiving, and I hope you have a great weekend. Thanks. <music>